Hey legends, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of Fat Chat. Thank you to everyone that's been tuning on in to the episodes each and every week. It's been great building this Fat Chat community and we've got some banger episodes coming out over the next few weeks. The episode today, I am joined by a world-class boxer, Michael Zarafa, who has got an upcoming fight uh, later on this year and we talk everything about Michael's career so far, all the massive matchups that he's already had, uh, but also really dive into everything performance related when it comes to training, preparing um, and uh, everything that goes into actually getting these big fights. So it was a great chat. We've also got some pretty cool signed uh, gloves from Michael to give away as well. There's going to be a password a little bit later in the show, so make sure you check out that. And 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 if you hear the password, make sure you uh, jot it down so we've got that ready to go. Uh, but uh, love your work, Legends. As always, just remember to follow, subscribe, like all the episodes on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Music, wherever you're listening, uh, and uh, enjoy the episode with Michael. Here we go. All right, welcome back to Fat Chat. I'm super excited. I'm joined by the middleweight, number one ranked boxer. He's uh, had 32 wins. How many knockouts? Uh, 21. 21. 21 knockouts. Yeah, He's an yeah. absolute bloody champion. He's had some massive matchups against Anthony Mundine, Jeff Horn. Who else? I fought Cal Brooks, Peter Quillen. The list goes on. The list, the list goes, goes on, on. And we're going to get into all the list of all these fantastic fights in his career so far. Please welcome Michael Zarafa. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, mate. Super excited to have you uh, likewise, likewise. come on down. It was so good. We connected on Instagram and said yeah come on down it was just perfect that uh, that the timing was right so i'm um, super excited to get into uh, everything about your career so a uh, big chat a uh, big part of fat chat talking all things performance so um you're obviously a absolute elite athlete uh, in in your class of boxing and i'm so keen to get into everything that you get up to in terms of your daily habits your training routines your mentality everything that actually takes to be an elite boxer so i guess like uh let's uh Start right back and we'll make our way forward. Let's talk a little bit, bit, little bit about you and your early days and how you actually got into boxing. So I was about seven years old and uh, I walked into a boxing gym and put my first pair of gloves on and had no idea about the sport. I just remember watching it and thought, you know, this looks pretty easy. Yeah. Two guys in there just punching on. And so, just going. Yeah, just going. <laughs> so a bit of de dedication, a bit of discipline, which I knew I had. Um, you know, I walked in the gym and I said, this is it for me. And it was weird. At seven years old, I said, I'm going to be a world champion. I wow. want to... I wanna, Give him my absolute all and sell out stadiums one day and yeah now i'm here what 20 23 24 years later amazing and where did you actually grow up i was just a local boy in craigieburn yep yeah yeah not uh northern suburbs and again yeah just walked in the gym and and said uh yeah, this 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 is where i need to be a boxing gym absolutely and was any of your other family members into boxing was you you know your dad your brother uh, brother sisters siblings? yeah no nah, none of my family they, i mean my family always did martial arts you know like the karate and all that kind of stuff but nothing yep. in terms of you know the intensity that i'm at but uh, they just did it more for self-discipline and just just the love of the, the the craft. But for me, I said I want to I want to win a world title. Yeah. You know I want to I want to I want to change the game, and um, you know put my last name out there. Absolutely. And make it mean something. So who actually took you to the gym first day? How did that literally tell me that story? Yeah, yeah. So that's I'm, such a significant I'm moment in your life. Footy, um, as a young kid, under tens and all that stuff, and um, you know obviously I was I was an overweight kid, and um, you know I always just get bullied and whatnot, and. I said, I've got to get rid of these man boobs. I've got to get rid of them. This stomach and man boobs need to go. And I remember, um, you know, my cousin, Chris Terzi, um, you know, he goes, let's go down to the, it was a youth center. It wasn't even a boxing gym. It was just basically where guy, kids went there and, um, you know, troubled kids and stuff like that. Just kind of found a place where to hang out after school or whatever they were doing. And they had like a little boxing where it was like 45 minutes and you'd go down there and we didn't even have a ring. It was four chairs yeah. that, uh, you know, was stay in between a, the chairs. Yeah, yeah, stay wow. between the chairs as a square. And um, yeah, I used to go down there two, three times a week. And um, yeah, I used to just walk walk to his house. And then from there, we used to walk together to the to the youth centre. And then um, you know, I went home and told my parents that, you know, this is what I want to do. And my dad was like, yeah, all right, well, I'll take you to the local boxing club. And and then, yeah, I never looked back. Wow, there you go. And with, so there was no hesitation from mum and dad to go, yeah, get I into know, boxing. It definitely was. You know, my, my parents to this day... They, uh, they hate it. You know, my mum reckons I've aged her 20 years. Um, <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just say she's getting old, you know. She's trying to blame me for her age. But, um, yeah, like I said, I, I um, they hate it. and um, But now they see the passion and obviously how good I am at the sport and the dedication and everything I've given up to, to be where I'm at. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, watch, watch me on the big screens is obviously hard for them to see me, you know, obviously get hit and whatnot. But 
um, yeah, they, they see the love and the passion I have for the sport and definitely they support me. Yeah, absolutely. So like that was when you first started. What was then sort of the progression into juniors and then getting to that next level of boxing? Yeah, so there's levels to the sport, obviously, and um, you know I had no idea what I was doing. I used to just go in there and just swing like a madman at uh, whoever was in front of me. <laughs> but uh, then I, I went into the amateur ranks, and you know from the amateur ranks, I, I didn't really like it. I didn't like the whole system of the headgear, the point scoring. I wanted to get in there and just fight. Yep. And um, you know, my trainer at the time said to me, you know what, let's just stop the amateurs. Let's just focus on two, three years because I was underage. You've got to be 18, obviously, to fight as a professional. Yep. Um, let's just take the time and, and build the skills. And, and uh, when you hit 18, let's turn professional. And on my, uh, on my 18th birthday, that's exactly what I did. I turned professional and I never looked back. You know, I went to 18 and 0 before I had my first loss. And, um, and then, yeah, like I said, I've, I've never looked back since. For sure. So then there's obviously this heaps of drive, lots of motivation that you've had all throughout, you know, from the start of your career, which is amazing. Where do you think that really came from? You touched on that, you know, you're a little bit overweight as a kid. Was that something, was there anything in particular that really kept you fueled and firing all throughout those early years? Uh, and even now? Yeah, not really. For me, it was just that, that one fight that could change my, my friends and family's life. And I say it all the time, you know, because growing up was, wasn't easy. It was, it was tough, you know, I got a brother and sister and we didn't we didn't come from a rich family or you know or whatnot we just did whatever we could to get by and um you know i want to change the game you know for, for me my family my family to be and um you know i don't want my family to go through what i went through yep. growing up it was tough you know and um you know i want them to have the best educations and and obviously not 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 making little spoiled brats but you know just give them the best life absolutely and um that's a real motivator for me anyone can work five jobs and work hard and make a good living you know but for me it's um putting my, my body on the line to give someone else's life a better yeah you know better um better living and, and for me that motivated me but as a kid um you know like just the atmosphere of of the stadiums the world title that legacy you know everyone can you can't play boxing you know you can play football you can play soccer you can play tennis but boxing is one of those sports where it's, it's a lonely sport you do it by yourself i mean you have your team but at a certain po point where you're walking out to the ring you know the team wait and it's you can that continues walking and getting in there and, and having to do the hard yards and you know i love that i love the struggle Absolutely. i love the loneliness and it's, you've uh, touched on your family so you must be really close to them can you run me through who's in your family uh yeah so we always have ups and downs like everyone's family um you know some days we're talking some days we're not yeah I mean, <laughs> Mate, that's uh, just family that's just family <laughs> that's just family um but yeah there's my obviously my mum, dad my uh my sister my younger brother but um you know they've my, my sister's been a big big part of my career um you know she took me under her wing once uh, when I was younger, growing up as a teen, and uh, if it wasn't for her, you know, I wouldn't be where I am because there was a lot of times where I had nobody, and you know, she got me through those next stages. Um, there's a lot of people that were there at the start that aren't aren't there now, you know. Yep. And my sister is one of those guys that has been there since day one. You know, we've had our ups and downs, but um, you know, if it wasn't for her. Yeah, we probably wouldn't be where I am now. For sure. And was there any significant coaches for you or mentors, uh, you know, coming up maybe just before you started to, to go pro that you were working with? Uh, I mean, I've had a lot of trainers. Um, you know, I started with uh, Sammy Andrula, a little old Italian man, uh, just in the garage. That's where I started. Yep. My, my journey started in the garage and, um, you know, the youth center, the garage, and, uh, and then I built my way up. But for me, I'm grateful for everyone that has played a role in my life. You know, there's not one that really stands out, but everyone was there for a reason. And, um, you know, if they were still with me now, it's because they're, you know, they're, they're a big, important person to me. And if they're not, sadly, it's because whatever happened, happened. But, um, you know, I play, they all played a huge role in my career. So yep. I'm super, super grateful for that. So then early on in your professional boxing career, how did that first fight come about? And uh, what sort of stuff did you have to do to get yourself uh, ready in terms of not just physically, we're going to the training stuff a bit later, yeah, yeah, but yeah. more about how do you even tee that up? How do you even get into yeah, the pro yeah. leagues? So I had a trainer at the time. Um, and then he just basically rang the promoters and said, I've got this young kid that wants to be a world champion yep. and uh, they had obviously the five promotions happening and it was at a Team Alice show, I debuted on a Team Alice show in the Sunshine Roller Skating Centre and um, yeah, right. <laughs> I thought I made it, you know, and it was my first fight. There's people around the ring. Yeah, 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 I thought, you know, this is my first, you know, my first fight, I thought I was, I was at the MGM in Vegas, you know, yeah. I think I made $200, I'm pretty sure I made 200 bucks the uh, the first fight and I thought, you know, I've made it, this, this is, is it. it, you know, I was shouting the boys drinks after the fight and... <laughs> It only lasted me probably, a, my pay only lasted probably a half an hour. But, yeah. <laughs> but for me, um, you know, like just the nerves, I remember being super nervous and I fought a guy that, I, you know, had one fight already and he had a win and, you know, I was 18 and I was fighting a man. Yep. And uh, for me, I was, I, was, I was real nervous. I remember in the back, I was shaking. And, and what was his name? Uh, oh, Peter, what was his name? Peter Macropotus was his name, yep. if, if I can remember. If I pronounce that right, I apologize if I don't. But um, yeah, he was, he was one fight in and I remember walking out and, but just, I, I didn't even know what was going on. 
yeah. I just got in a ring and thought. My trainer was talking to me in my ear and I wasn't even listening. I had no idea. It was going one ear out the other and I had no idea what was going on. Well, that's, that was a question I was going to ask later on was when you're actually in the fight, yeah, yeah, how yeah. much of what everyone's actually saying to you goes in? Is it a lot or not? Well, I had this question like the other day on a podcast. Someone asked me the same question. I said, look, to be honest, a lot of fighters are different, but for me, I don't really listen. And my yep. trainer's probably hearing this, going to crack it. But, <laughs> I mean, I don't, it's a lot to take in. You know, I, I hear what I'm doing wrong yep. and it's hard to go out there and do things they want you to do right mm -hmm. because... You know, sometimes you, they, it's easy to say, go out there and hit him with this left hook, hit him with the right hook or slip this, slip that. But, you know, when you're out there, I just go out there and be me and just do me and, and try to, you know, break down the fight. But I listen to what I'm doing wrong. Yep. You know, because then I can obviously, I can fix that. But a lot of the stuff, you know, 95% of what's actually said is all in the air because you can't actually, you've got a minute you've got to, to actually put you know, that into get your action, breath back, yeah. get your water, get your drink. If you can't get that fixed up, hearing people talk to you, you've got heads coming in out of the corners and there's so much going on, you know, and... Uh, for me, I just I just wing it and just yeah, take in what I can. For sure. Yeah. And then what was like your breakout professional fight to really get you to, you know, that next level in yeah, professional yeah. boxing? For me, I was always a prospect. Everyone was like, you know, this this kid's work it, with it, ethic and, um, you know, his ability. And when, was, how old were you for that first fight? Uh, I was 18 for my 18. first pro yep. fight. I mean, I was always a talent, even in the amateurs. You know, they said this kid, just because of my dedication, that's why I got my name, the pretty boy. You know, they were like, he's very pretty to watch. Yep. He's very neat. You know, he's stylistically, he's very good. Um, I thought it was just because you're good looking. No, no, no. I wish. I wish. I've been trying to shake it for years, but unfortunately, I just couldn't get rid of it. Um, yeah, it was just for my for my style, and um, yeah, like I, I probably around 24, 25. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I went over there and fought Cal Brook um, in England, in Sheffield, and he was obviously one of the biggest names, if not the biggest name in the sport. You know, former IBF world champion. He's fought multiple world champions. Um, and I was basically picked as a keep busy fight for him. Yep. Uh, he needed a keep busy fight, and they said, "Oh, there's a referee. He's high in the rankings. He's not. A, it doesn't look like a dangerous fight. Let's get him." Um, you know, in the first round, they thought they could blow me out in the first round, and I ended up taking him 12 rounds. Wow. And uh, I had huge moments. He only, he only beat me by two rounds. Yeah. And I uh, nearly stopped him in the ninth and in the twelfth. I had huge moments. We stood there for 36 minutes and just punched on, and um, that's when the whole world basically took, took notice of me and was like, "This kid." He's going to be something special. Wow, you know, that's 25 awesome. years old, I was a boy in a, in a man's world. Yeah. Now at 31, you know, I feel like I'm. It's my time now. Definitely. You know? And then obviously I beat Jeff Horn after he beat Manny Pacquiao, and we had that you know that rivalry, um, you know, back and forth. And then he got me in the rematch, sadly. Um, and then yeah, I kept going. I beat Isaac Hardman. There was a huge talk about that fight because he was you know a lot bigger than me. He was undefeated in 15 fights, knocking everyone out. You know, they reckon he was the biggest puncher in, in Australia. Mm -hmm. And um, the build-up for that fight was it was kind of fun. You know, every time we generally didn't like each other, just a personality <laughs> clash. Uh, yeah, every time we're at a media, you know, is there that many of them that you're like, oh yeah, I actually quite like you. If you're fighting them, it can't uh, be. You can't even have that, that. Like, there's a lot of like, you know, it's put on. Like me and Jeff Horn, as as much as it was real then and there, there was not no hate or yep. animosity between us. Um, you know, he's 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 a gentleman. Mm -hmm. But you know, this one particular fight, I was at Cardman. He's his personality is very out there. He's very loud. And, um, you know, he was FaceTiming me and every, every press conference we had. We it was FaceTiming. Yeah, yeah. I'd, 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 be, I'd be at the gym and he'd FaceTime. I'm going to punch your head in. And, you know, I, said, mate, no. I said, mate, the worst thing you did was sign that contract. I'll see you April 20. And, and um, yeah, but so every, every press conference, like, you know, we, we, he'd attack me. And I'd, I'd attack him. I launched a glass at him. He'd try to punch on me at a restaurant. And, and then come fight time, this huge hype. And, you know, I thought it's going to be a war, 12 rounds for an for a IBF World Title Eliminator. And then I ended up knocking him out in the second round. Unreal. So it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was good. And then it just, I just kept building. And um, now, obviously, I'm the villain in the sport, man, Tim Zhu. Um, and why has that built that way? Do you reckon? Uh, we've turned a lot of heads. Um, I'm, I'm number one. He's no, he thinks he's number one. I think I'm number one. You know, we're both ranked number one in our divisions. Um, and I, you know, there's only one way to settle that. You know, if you think you're the best, I think I'm the best. There's yeah. only one way, and that's that's the fight. And it's the new Anthony Mundine, Danny Green. Yeah. It's it's if not bigger already. And, um, you know, we were meant to have a fight scheduled last year, but politics and, you know, whatnot got in the way of that. And I was labelled as the runner, you know, the guy that pulled out of a fight, which was never the case. And like I said, I've, I've fought all around the world and, and fought bigger names than Tim Zoo. And uh, unfortunately, you know, that's just the way the media is. They always portray you as someone you're not. Yep. And, uh, you know, for me, it is what it is. I just roll with it now. And, and, um, and yeah, that fight will eventuate. It will.
It's a, it's a big fight. It has to, it yeah, has to happen. absolutely. That'd be a great one to watch. So, like, in terms of so far in your career, what has been the biggest in terms of stakes, um, people watching, uh, the biggest event that you've had, that you've fought so far? Uh, probably Cal Brook was probably the biggest. That was the biggest, um, yeah. In terms of, like, name. I mean, I fought Peter Quillen, who was the current... Uh, and you're w- traveling all around the world for this Yeah, well, yeah, right? yeah. So, I've been America, Russia, England, Japan. I've been all around the world. Um, But, yeah, pro- I mean, look, I fought big names, um, but... Calbrook was probably one that was like, wow. You know, I used to watch this guy as a, as a kid and, and look up to him and like, he's the IBF world, world champion. You know, big guys like Sean Porter, fought Triple G, Errol Spears, he's fought everybody. Um, for me, that was like, wow. You know, I like, had Michael Buffer as my ring announcer, you know, Tyson Fury and Billy Joe Saunders, all these, all world, these guns, you know, yeah. all these actors and stuff. Obviously, they were there to support him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, just to be amongst, you know, walking out, I was like, you know, I had world champions on my undercard, you know, superstars on my undercard, you know, and uh, I'm walking out there and I remember just the crowd being so hostile and just savage, you yeah. know, and I got in a ring and I, I was, you know, I had to pinch myself because I was like, I, was, I remember just scanning the room and I was just like, man, this is, it's I've crazy. made it. Yeah. You know, this is, this is, this is it. And as well as it didn't go my way, I just told myself that this is where I need to be. Yeah. This is, this was, I was born for this. Absolutely. You know, and, um, that's so why my, 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 uh, my slogan's BFG, Born for Greatness. I love and that. I was born for this. <laughs> <laughs> so good, man. So like the lead up to the fights, there's always the events where you guys are there together. You got They've got a microphone, you've got a microphone, you're going back and forth. Yep. Um, what's the sort of, do you have any like, is there prep that goes into that sort of stuff? Or is it more just, that's just you on the day, getting the emotion out, getting the feeling out, getting the hype out. How does that kind of come about? Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of a lot of Australia, and this is why I think I'm, I'm you know, labelled the villain. Um, a lot of fighters, they try to be Conor McGregor and they yeah. try to be, you know, your Muhammad Ali's or Floyd Mayweather's. I think the, the thing that I've um, heard from lots of athletes, if you're there to talk trash, you either got to be really, really good at it yeah, or yeah, you've yeah. just got to stick to the basics. Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. Well, it's, it's a big difference if you, like, get stuck in correct, between. Correct. And so. I think that's why, you know, like, I'm always, like, Fox Sports and, and stuff like that. They always give me that little bit of a platform to, you know, speak my mind because I'll just be me. Yes. And it, it comes pretty easy, you know. Like, these guys that are in press conferences, they try to be, like, American yep. and they're Aussies. And I'm just like, it looks too... Stage to put on, yeah. You just got to be whatever your style and comfortable. Yeah, yeah, being. yeah. And I've got a, I've got this bad habit. I mean, it's, it's a good trait, but I mean, I've got this bad habit of just dropping one-liners. Yeah. And I don't even know where I come up with them. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I watch back on the, on you know the, the TV or Fox Sports or the interviews or whatever it is, and I will scratch my head. And I'm like, where do people take? Where, where do you even come up with this stuff? I'm like, I've got no idea. You know, just, <laughs> but it works. It yeah. works, you know. And I've got people hashtagging and quoting things I say. What's and, the one that's really blown up? Has there been any of them? Oh man, there's been how many? There's been so many. I mean, the one probably was make sure you bring the toothpicks to get the leather out of your teeth. <laughs> like, there's been there's been so many, you know. Like there's just been a lot of a lot of one liners that I say. And I mean, Mickey Hatton was a big one that I did with yeah the sponsors underneath the bottom of your shoes for when I knock you out. You know, like I've done I've had so many, but like you know in the heat That's of the moment a yeah yeah in the heat of the moment i just i say a lot of things um and yeah i don't even i don't even know where i get them from but i mean it, it, it works for me and uh you know when i watch back i'm like i see why i'm the villain but um it's the start of the fight you know it's a business you can't have two guys in there. You know, imagine me and you were fighting. We're sitting there saying, you know, all the best. Yeah. You know, thanks, it's not bro, entertaining. Yeah, that's yeah, what you know. We're hugging it out. It's like, mate, you're the entertainment you're side. going on a date or you're about to fight, you know. So yeah, yeah. for me, you know, as long as we go in healthy, we come in healthy. Um, you know, that's that's what it's all about. But, you know, the, we're not friends before the fight. Yeah, definitely. That's one thing I go in here and say, you know what, we're, we're definitely enemies before the fight. Whatever the outcome is, we'll go get a beer. Yeah. You know, but, you know, for me, it's... I'll just be me and, and, and just try to um, sell the fight a little bit. Yeah, for you gotta, sure. You got to. You got to. You got to. You have to build it up. You gotta yeah, man. And the more you've seen, side. the more you heard. You know, the more you're worth, the more rise on the sport. You yes. know what I mean? Like it's it's what it's about. Boxing in Australia is very small. Yeah. You know, like it's um, it doesn't get enough recognition as it should. Mm-hmm. You know, now with like I've guys like well Jeff Horn, you know, did a lot for the sport, beating Manny Pacquiao. That turned a lot of eyes uh, on the sport, and then I and then I went out there and beat Horn, and then. You know, then the zoo, me and zoo saga, and then, you know, like, it's... It's, it's, it's been building. Good, and then Cambosis, of course, can't forget Cambosis, you know, like, he's the, he's the king of Australia at the moment, you know, you can't can't forget that, and, um, you know, he went over and did what no one's ever done, you know, go over there in, in their backyard to fight the world champion, take all four, four belts off him, um, it's unheard of. That's unreal. So, you know, we're, boxing's good at the moment, but yeah, like I said, we, um, the guys that are in charge of the media, 
are rubbish. Yeah. You know, they don't give you the platform. I just, I guess there's so many other platforms that you can now do yourself to start yeah, you know, yeah, launching and, and getting out and getting correct, eyes on everything correct. as well. And, hey? and guys like yourself doing great things like for, for sports, for athletes, for, you know, just people in general, yeah. you know, podcasts and, and little, these, these are the, the, the projects that you want. Just kind yeah, of, you know, they're get, great. Um, like, you can't call up Channel 9 now and say, hey, look, you know, I've got a world, like I should be on every page, you know, another Australian fighting for a world, world title, you know, but Unfortunately, we don't get that platform unless you're someone's son yep. or you're, you're related or married or something to somebody. You yep. know, it's, it's uh, not what, what you know, it's who you know, Absolutely. sadly. So like, let's talk everything performance related with all the training that you got going on because preparing for a fight, it must just be so hectic. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure your training has maybe evolved and, and changed over your career. So what does the build up for you look like right now for your upcoming fights? So every day varies um, between, you know, your strength and conditioning, yep. your sprint work, running, uh, your so you're boxing. doing quite a bit of running as well, hey? I run every day. Yep. Uh, for me, everyone... What know, sort of distances? Yeah, so everyone in my, in my career has always said I run way too much. Yep. I always do 10Ks a day. If I feel good, I'll bump it to 15Ks. Like, it's weird. And then also my partner's always on my back now and she tracks... Yeah. Like this this app thing on my it's called the Whoop. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it tracks basically everything you do. And I've got the watch; she's got the app on her phone, so yes, she can track she's everything. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, she knows. Okay, she there, please, Michael. Do and uh, she'll know <laughs> exactly. Fucking lazy what I'm today. Correct, Get out correct, there. You know. So, but um, yeah, it varies of a, a whole bunch of things from boxing, sparring, pad work, strength and conditioning, running. Um, and I'm averaging around two to three sessions a day. And um, you know, one thing I need to do a lot more of is recovery. Yep. You know, I hate the recovery side of things and you know, the stretching and the, the massages, the ice baths. And yep. a lot of athletes will be like, man, that's the best part of it, you know. But for me, I'll, I've always believed in hard work. Yep. And, um, you know, they always say as you're getting older, you know, work smarter, not harder. But for me, I've just, ever since a little kid, I've always just been go, go, go. You've got to just, you know, outwork them. Um, and I said, I'm training, yeah, three to five hours a day. And then when I head overseas, that's when I start amping things up. Roughly around six weeks out of a fight is when it starts becoming really starts real to heavy. Go. Yep. Um, but at the moment now, yeah. So how many more weeks is it currently when we're speaking right now until your to your next fight? About, uh, about ten weeks now. Ten weeks. So okay. yeah, I'm head. I'll head over in in four. So I've started the baseline of my camp now, yep. uh, which I obviously correlate back and forth with my American team and and tell my Australian team to yep. uh, get me ready. And then, yeah, I'll do the last six to eight weeks over there hard. Yeah, in terms of training habits as well, like for a session, what does that look like for you? What time are you getting up the same time every day? Um, are you eating the same stuff every day? Are you doing the same sort of um, uh, exercises and drills yep. every day? What are you sort of doing? So back in my early days, I used to obviously work, I used to do a shift work job and I used to get up at like three in the morning, do yep. my, my run, go home, shower, go to work. Then. Now that I've got the freedom of being a full-time athlete, I feel like you know sleeping in obviously is is the better. You 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 running at four a.m. and then running at seven a.m. You're going to run a lot. Yeah, you're right. You're dedicated because you're up at four, but you're you're only running at sixty percent. Rest is so important. Yeah. yeah, but you're only running at sixty percent. You're only getting going through the motions and just getting that run done. Where like if you get that extra three four hours sleep, mm. you wake up at seven, get there by seven thirty. You're fresher. You've probably had breakfast. Yeah, you're actually going to train harder. So for me, I'm up at always every day around seven seven thirty. Uh, I have my cold shower, you know. Do cold shower every morning? Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. So obviously uh, just before I get out, I'll, I'll chuck it on cold and, and sit there and wake up. Yeah. And then uh, I'll head to the gym and, yeah, belt out my cardio. Normally I like to start my day with cardio, um, you know, with a, with a nice, you know, 10K run or eight and a half, 10K run. She was listening. <laughs> um, check the watch. Yeah, yeah, check the watch. Um, and then, yeah, I'll come home, shower, eat, uh, back in the gym an hour and a half later. Yep. And I'm there for about two hours, two and a half hours. And that's my boxing, my pad work, my bag work, yep. skills and drills. Um, and then at night time, I'll finish off with either a recovery session or uh, I'll add a strength and conditioning session. Yep. And, uh, and then, yeah, at home and do it all again. Sleep and get up and do it all again. In terms of reps when you're doing pad work, uh, bag work, all that sort of thing, is there like a number of reps that you don't kind of want to go past because of, you know, overuse injuries or anything like that? Uh, is, that is that sort of anything that gets No, not really. Into? We work off rounds. Rounds, I, I, yeah. I mean, every fight is different. I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't know what other fighters do, but for me, I work off rounds. Yep. You know, so if we're fighting a 12 rounder, you know, we'll do you know, minimum you know, 12, 15 rounds just on, you know, the pads or the bags or whatever we're doing, just so we, we should try to imitate the fight in terms of like cardio wise. Yep. So if I'm doing a 12 round, I might spar eight rounds, jump on a bag, you know, do four rounds and then maybe back in the ring and finish off with some pad work, yep. floor to ceiling, speed ball, you know, ab work. And that might be my boxing session. Yep. And then later that day I'll, I'll run or if I haven't run prior to that, I'll do my strength work or, or vice versa, you know? Yep. So I just, we try to imitate the fight um, all I do is just rock up, really. Yep. I, you know, and you just go, just hammer just, me with whatever. Yeah, yeah, I just rock up. And that's why people say, how do you get through those days when you can't be bothered? And I said, just rock up. Yep. I said, I wake up every day and I, I, I literally say to myself, like, 
I can't be effed, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm cooked. You know, I say it pretty much every, every morning. But whilst I'm doing that, I'm getting ready, packing my bag, driving to the gym, you know. And yep. once you're there, you're, you're amongst the boys and your team or, you know, you're having a laugh and you, you're not even, you're just going through the motions, you're skipping, you're warming up. Um, and then, yeah, you just, get, you just get the job done. Yeah. And then in terms of diet as well, what do you follow that? Is there anything uh, sp- <laughs> specific or just because you've got such a high training load right now, you're just yeah, kind of yeah. shoveling stuff in? I'm shocking when it comes to diet. Mm. Um, you know, I'm human. I love uh, I love my junk food too much. Yeah. But um, for me, I, I... But you're burning it so much with the amount of sessions and reps and everything that you Correct. Well, in, what, so. I've got this thing where like, I overtrain. I, I know that for a fact, but I, I balance it out with, I'd rather train a little bit more, but enjoy life. Yeah. You know, a lot of fighters... You know, train a lot less, but they're dieting, dieting a lot harder. Yeah. And I feel like if you're training as hard as I am and you're dieting as well as you're supposed to, you're not really living. You, it, it's boring. You, you know, you're, you, you're mentally going to burn out. So for me, you know, I put in all the work. I put in my five hours a day and then I'll jump on the scales. I'll say, oh, yeah, I fight at 72.8 kilos mm-hmm. as a middleweight. Now, I jump, I'm always 75, 76. I'm always ready. Yeah. You know, and if I can see that my scales are 75, I'll have a bit of chocolate. I'll have some chocolate. Yeah. I might, you know, hey, what do you feel like? We'll get a Macca's. Let's get a Macca's. You know, because I can. You know, there's a time and place, obviously, when you kind of can't do that. But around four weeks out of a fight is when I really start knuckling down. Yep. Because and I'm so close to my weight. You and know? then with that sort of four or six weeks leading up to the fights and you're changing that intensity big time, how are you trying to imitate the intensity and the load that actually fighting, um, you know, an actual round and, and match is? How do you actually imitate that? Well, you just training? go you just go hammer and tong and training, you know. like yeah. you, you go by how your body feelings too, you know. Some sessions, you know... You can tell by the first round of the pads, you know, like I'll be with my, my trainer Ty in, in Australia and, you know, first round, we're just like, Phew, we're on here. Yeah. You know, and then before you know it, by four or five rounds, we're just, we're going next level stuff, you know, just we're throwing two, 300 punches around, we're just, yeah. we're sharp. And then there's days where, you know, you're just not as sharp, that time is a little bit off um, and you just kind of go through the motions. I, I don't like missing sessions. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people say, oh, it's a bad day, just sleep in and... I don't believe in days off. I believe in, you know, lighter sessions, sure. But um, So every day you're training? Every day. Every day. Every day, you know, two, three times a day. Uh, on weekends, you know, I'll do a Sunday, I'll do a nice long hill runs or something like that. And, and Saturdays, you know, the same thing. I'll, or, I'm probably not in time I'm in camp sparring or um, doing pad work and stuff like that. But yep. uh, yeah, every day, every day I wake up and I'm like, you know, I don't feel it today, but let's just get it done. And the, re- the recovery side of things, I know you said, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. it's not your favorite part of it. What's that sort of routine looking like for you? Well, I'm starting, I pr- pretty much started today, <laughs> um, you know, after 31 years. I, I, <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a world yeah, first. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> I, I used to like, I, I mean, recovery, it's a hard one, you know, like in my head, I'm like, what's the right thing? What's the wrong thing? You know, like today I, had I think the, the answer to that, there is no right way or wrong yeah, way. It's like, more just what actually makes you feel correct, rest and recover. Correct, 100%. You know, but for me, like, like today I did an ice bath. I had strength and conditioning and then you've had, they've got ice and, and the hot and cold tanks upstairs. And yeah. I absolutely hate them, but um, I'm learning to love them. But yeah, I, I go for massage. I've got a ch- chiropractor on the team as well and, and you know, the ice baths. And I just don't do it enough. You know, like I just feel like I'm all right. Like my body feels good. Like seeing now, like I feel good. You know, like I don't think, oh, I need a massage or oh, I need an ice bath. But, and now I'm starting to make it, you know, I've literally forced myself to train out of this facility yep. because I've got the ice tanks there. Yep. So that as soon as I finish, I'm just straight, straight in the in tanks. There, yeah. So then yep. it's, it gets done, you know. And that's but, like a change of like a habit and routine, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Just, just, just do something you hate, you know, you just do it like you love it. That's how I've learned to, to live my life, really. There's things in life that you hate, but you just got to learn to do them as if you love them absolutely and recovery is one of them and the other super important part probably even more so than just the physical training is the mentality behind you approaching a fight approaching your training your routine your habits tell us about that what's the driving uh, motivator for you and do you do any other practices whether it's you know um, visualization imagery do you work with anyone for that side of stuff yeah so i never as as i used to always psych myself i used to be so nervous so scared uh, and i never believed in I used to like literally take the piss out of someone saying, well, I'll go see a sports cycle. I'm like, the how can fuck, I sit man? there? Yeah, like how can I sit there and this guy like, you know, whatever. And then I got to about 26 years old and um, Bill Patterson, uh, who I work with now, absolute guru at what he does. And uh, to this day, I don't know how he does it. It's, 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 it's strange. But I've learned now to walk out into a stadium in front of 20,000 people and not hear one voice. Yeah. It's so weird how to just be present and I've learned now how to, you know, even when I'm in the shower, I practice that, you know, like feeling the water actually hit your body and, and, and visualizing and feeling what that feels like. And yeah. one of the training methods he did for me once was, you know, when you're in a plaza, mm-hmm. like 
<clears throat> in a food court or something like that and you just hear people talking you don't know what anyone's saying he said sit down just whenever you have a background noise yeah yeah, yeah. It's, and, and it's it's so weird and people listening you know try because it, it actually works you know sitting down and you're having lunch or whatever but try to not the person next to you but try to make out a conversation and when you can actually be present you'll hear that conversation mm -hmm. it's so weird and um you know that's the practice i do to myself every day even like feeling the steering wheel you know if you're thinking about what a steering wheel feels like you're not thinking about the fight or the nerves or the crowd or the outcome yeah you know i'm present all the time and you know working with obviously him i've, I've come a long way because i used to be i used to be pretty bad now like i've got this mentality where people say how are you so calm like before in the back rooms i'm dancing got my team there whatever because i say it is what it is you know, if I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. <laughs> you can't change that. It's in God's yep. hands now. You know, like for me, I'm going to go out there and, and give him my absolute all. I've trained. Um, you know, I'm going to go out there and be Michael Zarafa. If Michael Zarafa loses the fight, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. And, you know, as soon as I do that, I just take all this pressure off myself. Yeah. You know, because nerves and fear, I said this the other day on my podcast, it's, it's self-made. It doesn't yeah. actually exist. If, if the word nerves and the feeling, it's all self-made. Well, anxiety is just, you know, stuff that hasn't happened about. yet. Correct. Yeah. So, and that's what I say. most of it doesn't happen. Correct. So. If you think about anything, anything, even if it's good, if you think about something in, in the future, you'll give yourself anxiety. Yep. If you think about something in the past, even if it's good, you know, oh, I won that fight. What a, you'll get sad because you want to relive that feeling again. But it's past you. You'll get depressed if you start thinking about behind you. If you start being present, you start just appreciating things more and just being like well i can't change it you know there's a lot of people that are here today that aren't here tomorrow yeah you know touch wood or something could happen to me at 5 p.m tonight yeah you know like no one knows but at the moment now i'm on a podcast i'm enjoying life that's you good know, that's it's the best way to be and you know you can't put all this extra pressure on yourself and um you know it's a lot of it's easier said than done like i sometimes and you reckon that, that this has all happened from like 26 from working yeah uh, working like the sports side and actually 100%. implementing that correct and you know i'm it's easier said, like I, she probably think, like if you can listen to your own, you know, your own words and take note of yourself. Because a lot of times I'm sitting there and I complain and I want this and I want that and this and that. I'm not present and I'm beyond anxiety and I'm beyond depressed. But, um, you know, like when you really think about it, you know, that might last an hour and then all of a sudden I'm watching TV and I've completely forgotten. I've just had a little meltdown yeah. and um, I'm moving forward. You know, at the end of the day, all that media, you know, anything you're trying to achieve in life will come when you win that world title. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And you've yeah. had such a successful uh, run so far, yeah. all doing really well. Was there any points, whether it be an injury uh, or a fight that maybe didn't go your way or whatever the situation may be that you can share with us, that you had to go through some adversity? And what did you do to get yourself back, both physically training um, and also mentally as well? Uh, every day. I mean, look, there's a certain you know, particular thing that happened in my career that sadly I can't talk about. Um, but, you know, I was in the darkest point of my life. Yeah. Um, I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know which way was left or right. You know, then COVID hit. Then, you know, the whole Tim Zoo stuff happened. And, you know, I was from being the king of Australian boxing, dethroning, you know, the best fighter in, in, in you know, the world because he beat Manny Pacquiao. Um, you know, to being the most hated athlete. And it was all out of my control. I, I had no, no control of any of it. Um, it was hard to get up. You know, I was receiving death threats. You know, wow. I, was, I was getting drilled, man. And even, even to this day, I still, you know, you still copy idiots that get on there and, 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 and drill you left and right. But I mean, for me, I just didn't know how to, how to deal with it. And, um, you know, I had all these people around me, but I felt like I was alone. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know you know what what to do and i literally woke up one day and just said you know what fuck me snap out of it you know you you're gonna end up taking your own life for something you had no control over yeah. you know something that you know you, you can't you can't do anything about it just you know and i forced myself into the gym and you know i just started and eventually it was so tough and then eventually i just got to a point where you know what i built myself back up and no one can help you it's it's so weird like because you can have a thousand people which i did everyone's saying come here come there come this and that and you know trying to give me advice but unless you you know wake up and say okay i need to help myself now you, you know you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink you know yep. the, the the horse does that you know and that's the same with you and the body and then uh yeah i just bounced back and now i'm where i am today but there were so many dark times in my life man where i was just like and that lasted for about two years yeah i was like man this is 
this is ugly, you know, and I hope no one goes through that. And that's why I, I get so defensive when people drill other people on social media, you know, like no one knows what everyone's going through. You know what I mean? And it's... It's just too easy and too accessible for yeah, everyone just to get on and, you know... Yeah, and people don't don't parade or, or you know, being depressed isn't fake. It's being happy yeah. is what's fake. You know, someone that's depressed, you'll never know they're depressed because they're being f- happy and they're, they're faking that Behind they're the okay. Mask, yeah. yeah, you know, and that's why we drew on that. And this is all coming from parents, you know, that have kids that are trying to lead their kids the right way. And then they're on there saying, I hope you get killed and this and that. And for what? Because a fight didn't take place. Mm. Something that I had no control over. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was politics. It was, you know, the pandemic. It was a whole bunch of things, you know, and it's, it's, it's a cruel world. Like we should be picking each other up, you know, like helping each other, not, you know, tearing each other. Yeah, yeah, man. Like so bad. We're, we've passed that day and age, you know, with the racism and this and that. And, but sadly, it's just the world that we live in and I'm only one person. Yeah. You know, if I could change the world, I would. Yeah. You know, if I had multi-million dollars, you know, I'd be giving it to those in need. You know, because I don't need that. Yep. You know what I mean? My family don't need that. But, you know, people around the world do. Hey, legends, quick little break in the podcast here. Just to say thank you to everyone that's been following along the Fat Chat journey so far. It's been great doing the episodes. Uh, and uh, we want to continue to build the podcast. And we can do that with a little bit of a help and a little bit of a favor from everybody out there listening. If you wouldn't mind following, subscribing, or liking, or just telling your mates and sharing around the episodes that you've been enjoying, it goes a long way to getting more guests on the pod. Continue to grow it and build it. Uh, and I've been loving doing it. So I uh, would love, love your help. I know you're a little favor. So if you can ask that favor, what whatever you want at some point. Uh, and uh, the other little thing in the episode today is we've got a couple of signed gloves from Michael to give away, which is bloody awesome. The signature on it, top notch. I want to keep them for myself. They look that good. And for an entry and more details of how to win it, you're going to need the passcode and the passcode is champ. So remember champ, all right? Check out the social uh, clips and also the posts for more details on how to enter. But remember the password, champ. Love your work. Back to the episode. All right. So let's talk about like who's in your team. So who travels around with you for your fights, for your training, your preparation, your trainers, your coaches? Tell me, tell yeah, me yeah. about your team. So recently, I just uh, probably about six, six to eight months ago, um, I signed with you know one of the biggest names in the in the sport, um, Elvis Grant, who's. <laughs> You know, the Grant, the Grant Boxing Glove is, you know, been in the sport for 40 odd years. And guys, the best of the world, Mayweather, you know, everyone, Mike, the best fighters in the world have all worn Grant Gloves. And, um, you know, I got in contact with him or we got in contact with each other and he signed me as a, as a manager. And, um, you know, I've got a nine time Hall of Famer in uh, Jimmy Montoya, who's going to be my head trainer in America. And, um, I'll head over there to train with them. But in Australia, I'm down at, with Team Alice, with Ty and Nige, just, um, yeah, keeping fit, putting me through the paces. You know, we correlate back and forth with the team overseas to, to see what they want me to do. Yep. Because um, you're like contracted over there, right? Correct, yeah, yeah. So as much as I live in Australia, I'm, I'm technically an American. Yep. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's, it's got two teams, one in Australia, one in America, and one keeps me fit and strong, and the other one gets me ready for war. Yep. So... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's going so back great. Over there, yeah. And then who else travels with you? So, uh, well, in America, it'll be only me and, and my partner. Fantastic. Um, and the family and, and friends and sponsors. Yep. They come up with me too. But, um, yeah, the main ones are basically just me and her. And we go over there and, great. and do all the hard yards over there for awesome. eight weeks. Just yeah. grind it out. Just grind it out. Fantastic. It's, it's different too because here, like, you know, you, you finish training, you get, a, you get a high point, you can go get dinners and this and that or do podcasts. Yes. But obviously there it's Over just, there, you're more isolated. Yeah, That's, yeah, it's you know, just to and from the gym. Yep. You know, you might go out for dinner here and there, but it's just wake training. up, train, go home, watch TV, go back. It's, it's camp. Yep. You know, it's training camp. There's no... There's no, nothing glorified about it. Yeah. And then leading up to, say, the week of the fight or a couple of weeks out, whatever that might that might look like, what are the habits that you're doing? And what do you do to, like, cut weight? Run me through yeah, that because yeah. this is just, like, this just blows my mind. <laughs> but uh, you said before that you keep your weight pretty close. You yeah, don't have yeah. to do anything drastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I hate, I hate the weight cut. Everyone hates weight cut. Yeah, I of mean, course. You, you, no you one know. can fucking like that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, just not eat and just relax and train. But um, for me, I, I try to keep myself around four or five kilos within weight yep um and then i do a, a water load which i do in probably about three days of a week of the, of the week prior sorry so like the say i'll start on the sunday monday tuesday i'll do six liters of water wow and then as in each day yeah 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 so Fuck. six to eight so i try to basically flood within the week i'll probably drink over 20 something liters of water wow and then i do that for about four or five days 
And then on the they last... They just blown up. Yeah, yeah. You just... You feel like absolute crap. I mean, you feel good because you're hydrated. Yeah. But in terms of like... Can you eat because nah, you're so yeah, full? Nah, yeah, so full. That's, that's the whole purpose of it. Yeah. Because the water, you'll just piss it out. Yeah. And um, yeah, you're in the, you basically can't leave the house because you're just going to the toilet every back and forth, two back minutes. Back and forth. Um, and then, yeah, within the the last 48 hours, I basically cut out all fluids yeah. and don't drink nothing. Nothing literally touches my, my, my mouth. Wow. And, um, yeah, I'll lose about four, four and a half, five kilos there. Fuck. And then without, you know, eating as much food as I usually eat, you know, and I try to clean up as much as I can, I'm eating, like, you know, salads and high-protein foods. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you just fly in the, in, the, in the weight. So normally about... The week out, I'm about three and a half kilos overweight. Yeah, yeah. And then do you do saunas and stuff like that? Uh, or you very just, rarely. you're just doing the water loading because you don't have to do it nearly as much? Yeah, well, <clears throat> if, if the water weight hasn't worked or if it's still holding, because sometimes it can be stubborn. Yeah. Sometimes the body just doesn't, doesn't flush um, or you might have had too much salt the night before or whatever it may be. Your body just sometimes has that stubborn yep. stubborn way of not, sh- not cutting the weight. And, and I might sit in the sauna for 20 minutes just to help kickstart everything yep. and I do that basically on the day of the four, of the weigh in but I'm, I've, I've never I'm always smack on like when it comes to professionalism when it comes to weigh ins and, and, and fight nights I do everything yep. yeah everything perfect four weeks out I'm basically you know like yeah, straight line straight line yeah all. nothing like now if I like I said of other athletes like anything I do 10 weeks out like if I do something today it's not really going to benefit my fight like if I have a bowl of salad now Yep. It's not going to benefit my fight in 10 weeks from now. Yep. If I have a chocolate bar, it's not going to impact my fight 10 weeks from now. But you're doing it, you know, within that four weeks, you know, you're eating and, and I don't drink. I don't have a, a crazy lot. I don't drink. I don't do any of that stuff. I don't party. I don't, I'm getting old. Yeah. But, um, Me too, bro. Don't you know, I, like I just don't have that drive anymore to be, you know, let's, by 9.30, I want to be dozing off watching Netflix. You know what I mean? But, yep. um, but yeah, like the water weight, it's yeah, never fun. Yeah. And what sort of preparation goes into the actual opponent that you're fighting in terms of watching tape is that you that does that or your coach or a bit of both and your trainers or? so i've never watched and every fight is different again I, i'm only speaking on behalf of myself but um i never watch my opponents yeah i just find that watching your opponent fight somebody else is just it's a misjudgment you know because that person that they're fighting fight. isn't you correct yeah. yeah you know like it's just you know you might see things that they do you know religiously it's the same kind of thing over and over but i don't watch it you know because if you type in Mike Tyson, you type in any fighter, now, you type in Michael Zarafa, you're going to see highlights. Yep. You're going to see when they're looking like a beast. Yep. You're not going to see them, you know, unless you type when in... When they're getting sloppy getting or tired. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, correct. So for me, I just trust in my team. Um, you know, I just rock up to the gym and uh, I trust in them and trust in their game plan. And I go in there and a lot, of, a lot of people say, how do you feel when you, you know, that first bell rings? And I just say, man, I just wing it. Yeah. How can you prepare for the unknown? You know, I just... It's like getting in the car. When you get in the car, you just you're not meant to but people on their phone you're playing with the radio you're looking out the window and same with the ring you know when you get in the ring it's just I know what I've got to do it's just like driving just do you yep. and uh, you know round by round that's why it's 12 rounds not every fight's one in the first round yep. I'm, I'm fit and ready for 12 um, and I just basically try to dissect the fight each round yep and then for your next fight that's coming up, is there anything different that you've worked on preparation-wise? Like, was there any skill things that were a little bit different? Um, has there been any other stuff that's just been a little bit more unusual for the, for this prep? Uh, not really. I train always the same, yeah. um, to be honest. Just Nothing habit, 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 yeah, getting in, just habit. doing the same thing. Yeah, correct. But I think I've, I've added more strength um, and more recovery. Yep. <laughs> and the mental the mental side of things, if you're mentally burned out and I was talking to my manager Elvis yesterday about this and he's like man we need to we need to cut training what you're doing now in Australia in half yeah he said because I need you to come up here fresh and you know we're going to be sparring three times a week against elite you know the best of the best number you know number one two in the world you know like every second day he says I need you fresh and if you're mentally burned out um it's all over yep the body just won't work and I've had those days where I'm running. I'm just like, man, like. Sounds like you're just running at a high octane yeah, all, all the time. time. Yeah, all the time. And, and you know, it's like like a car. When it goes too many k's, car goes turns to shit. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you need a new car. Just Correct. need to chill. You, know, you need to do some more fucking recovery. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> service is one thing, but once it goes to too many k's in the car, you know, it's not. You can't really undo that. The car's basically one that's really cooked. Yeah. And um, you know, that's what that's what I'm doing now. I'm just basically. You know, on idle just twenty four seven. Yep. And uh, now I'm just tapering down, refreshing. The mind's coming good now. And um, you know, when it, when it, when the mind's right, I'm, I'm dangerous. Yep. 
you know, like very, very dangerous. Absolutely. And now looking back with uh, all the amazing things that you've done, is there anything at any point that you would have done just a little bit differently, whether that be how you trained uh, people that you got involved with in terms of, you know, working out with and training styles or anything like that? 100%. If yeah? I could, uh, I would look, I mean, I wouldn't change anything to where I am, but I'd definitely change things I did. Yeah. And I'd obviously implement, you know, I'd definitely read contracts better. <laughs> yeah. I would, um, I would definitely read contracts Have you had better. nightmares of that, have you? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, one of those touchy subjects, but yeah, yeah I've, I've had, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of, before there's ever a good thing in boxing, there's always a thousand bad. Yeah. Before you get one yes, there's always 10,000 no's. Yeah. Um, and, and the sport, uh, you might know this if you, if you've watched this, is, is, it's full of sharks. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the advice I got, I wish I got it earlier, but a good advice I got was keep your circle very small. Yeah. And, um, you know, I wish I knew that, you know, when everything turned to crap, but, yeah, just, just little things I would change. But in terms of where I'm at and the things I've had to go through, it's made me who I am today. It's made me stronger. Yeah. Um, you learn from experience as well. Correct. Yeah. And, and you know, you, it builds your your inside. And I say this all the time. It has to be stronger than your outside. Yeah. You can look at someone and be like, man, look at how strong he is. He's tattooed. He's got this. He's got that. But you could say a word and he crumbles. You know, see, I'm the opposite. You know, I might look like I'm not as dangerous, you know, the, the pretty boy look or whatever you want to say. But on the inside, I'm... I'm 10 times tougher. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to take a lot of things to to get through that. I wouldn't want to fuck with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm a very kind person, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I, um, I'm very, very um, one way. Yeah, you know, A absolutely. lot of people talk to me and say, man, you're, you're super intimidating. You know, you're very, very like, wow. Yeah. And I get all the time, even on podcasts, they always say all the time, like, man, like, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm like, I don't know. Like, no, that's just, that's just you. Yeah, yeah. Like, just the aura you bring. I'm just like, man, your inside's going to be a lot stronger than your outside. Yeah. You know? just how you got to be in life. I love it. So then tell me about the fights that are coming up right now. Yeah, Who are you yeah. fighting? Um, t- tell me all the hype. What's planned for it all? Tell so me. I've recently become a mandatory for the WBA, so I'm world number one. Wow. Uh, we just got back from Orlando, um, and they inducted me as the WBA. How does that world feel number? being the number one in the world? Yeah. Like, I couldn't even comprehend yeah. that for anything. It's like, crazy. It's crazy. Because the guys on the list, um, I used to idolize and watch, and fans yep. of, you know, um, and they're behind me calling me out. I'm like, this is this is nuts, this is wild, know? yeah. But it was also inevitable for me. As much as I'm grateful and respectful, and you know, oh my God, you know, like fanboying a little bit, of it was always inevitable for me. I always knew it was going to happen. I always said to myself, at seven years old, I was going to be a world champion. But um, yeah, it's a little bit like this is cool, but um, you know, I got a job to do. I'm not I'm not the world champion yet. I've got uh, two big big fights coming up in uh, in New York. Yep. First one taking place in August. Yep. What date is um, that in August? So the dates will be confirmed. Yep. Um, but the contracts are signed, so guaranteed be in go. August. And um, yeah, I'll fight the winner out of Danny Garcia and Erez Lundi Lara, wow. who arguably beat Canelo Alvarez and two of the biggest names Huge. in the sport. Yeah, they're massive. And um, again, to be having my name, you know, thrown out like, you know, the winner fights Michael Zarafa is like... What the fuck? This is nuts. Yeah, it's like, fuck, this is crazy. But um, again, it was inevitable for me. And, you know, it's it's... It's going to be a hard fight because they're two completely different fighters. One's a left-hander, one's a right-hander. Yep. So um, I've got to basically train completely different for either one of them. Yep. But I'm ready for them both. You know, I fell short. I've fallen short How twice. long will you know, like, beforehand who you're fighting? I have 120 days. Yep. So after August, whatever date it is, um, I have 120 days. Yep. And that's contracted now. And they are... Uh, they can't. They can't run now. They have to fight me. <laughs> they have to fight <laughs> They're me. They're locked in. I'm here. Hundred <laughs> percent. You know, and I, I'm not going anywhere. And um, you know, the fight should have taken place earlier because I am the mandatory. But again, contracts and, and whatnot. They uh, they had something. You know, and I'm not. I'm not someone that's because I know how hard the sport is. And that's what I mean. We should be helping everyone. And, and you know, I was. I would have been that that home wrecker. You know, they had before I became mandatory. So when you become mandatory, basically they they have to fight you. Mm-hmm. That you can't. You know, when you're the world champion, you can pick and choose a little bit. But when you have a mandatory, they have to fight you. And prior to me becoming a mandatory, Danny Garcia and Lara had already verbally agreed and the PBC, the contracts were already signed. And yep. then I came in and kind of disrupted everything. Now you've got a, now you've got a mandatory, so you have to fight Zarafa. And they're like, oh, mate, you know. So they basically contacted me and just said, look, you know, with all due respect, we, we know you're the, the world number one and you are the mandatory, but can you basically give us the green light? And my manager said, mate, we, we, I work for you. Um, we can basically crash the party and say, no, 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 let's let's go now. I said, but you're going to piss everybody off. Yeah. He said, we don't want to do that. He yep. said, let's play nice. Let's play, yeah, boys, go, go fight. I basically get a media campaign. Um, and they basically, on the August fight, they now promote me as now the mandatory, the winner out of, so I'll fight on their undercard the as the semi-main yep. event or wherever they put me on the card. And I fight uh, the winner. And yep. they basically promote me as now you fight Michael Zarafa. He's in the crowd or he fought earlier on the night. Yeah. 
Um, and that takes place 120 days after that. Amazing, bro. How so, exciting. It yeah. must be such an exciting huge, time huge, for you. It's huge. Good money. That's good money I bet it is. <laughs> so, have, have you, do, do, they, do they release what that is? Yeah, yeah. So I've got a contract and I've agreed to that. And um, it's yeah, definitely my biggest payday. Sick. So, Can't yeah, wait. I'm happy. I'm We'd happy. be rolling up in a new car yeah, next yeah, time. Well, well, even me, better I'm, I'm not even like, I could, We could go now and, and buy a Ferrari. I'm not, I've never been that kind of person. I've... Um, yeah, the money's good. The boxing's good, but I mean, but it's I'm, good I'm, just to get that recognition for you know all course, that hard work course, and, and course, getting yeah. that shot finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, like I said, I've never been motivated by money. Um, you know, if I did, I would have. I told you my first fight was two hundred bucks. Exactly right. I would, have, I would have retired. But for me, it was just <laughs> that that world title. You know, sitting. Oh, I always replay it in the back of my head. I, she hears me a thousand times. I every day, at least once or twice a day, I'll literally visualize and manifest and and verbally have Michael Buffer read out the scorecard and, you know, say, and the new, you know, and it, it's, it's weird. Like everyone laughs because. No, but that's all part of that sport. Yeah. Yeah. Psych yeah, and yeah like and getting your I'll be in the shower and I'll, I'll say, you know, judge one scores about it, whatever. And then I'll say, and you win it by unanimous decision. I'll say, and the new, you so know. So that's why you said that in the lift coming up. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. That's I'd, why you said I'll it. I do right. it. I do it all the time. I'll hear a song and, you know, I'll G up and the hair, I'll, and the hair is standing on the back of my neck now. And I can, G myself up with just saying a few words. Yeah. With just saying, and then you. Which is a powerful thing to do. That's all I want to hear. Yeah. Nothing else matters to me. Hate, it, it, it's, it's just words. Um, you know, if these guys knew better, they'd be doing better. And are you calling yourself when you say that the world champ? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what it is is Michael Buffer. It's now the end of the fight, the world title fight. He's the champion. I'm the, con the contender that was, you know, fighting for it. And uh, if we hear, and, this, and still, it means he's won, you know, so we want to hear and the new. And the new. So I basically replay this scenario in my head. It's strange. Over you know, and over. I'll be in the shower. I'll be in Coles. I'll be driving. I'll be all around the world and I'll be just, yeah, you know, judge one scores about, judge two scores about, judge three scores about, and you win it by unanimous decision. I'll say and the new. Yes. And I just I scream it out as if it's happening. Excellent. And um, you know, I picture on the rope holding the belt. Saying I told I told her well you know look at me now I Absolutely. told you yeah. and uh, boxing must be the only sport or, the, or boxers really probably the only people that if you went hey champ how you doing then that's a good yeah, thing yeah, right yeah, well, so yeah. there was a video I literally just watched of like of some sports guys and they were like what's the worst thing you someone could say oh hey champ yeah 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 and, but then I was like that I've must had a lot be worse. the best thing I've yeah had a lot worse. I've had <laughs> a lot worse. pretty good yes I am the champ yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I champ legend I mean I, I've had like I said I've had a lot worse I've had you know a lot of uh, bad words but but the champ in boxing that means yeah, yeah, yeah. you're the guy well, it's cool, you, you know, want to be the champ boxing's yeah. weird like you know when you see AFL I've got to events and stuff like that and, and you see uh, AFL players and it's cool you know like but there's a lot of them yes you know when I walk into a room it's like it's you it's you know, an individual they, you can feel yeah. like nudge oh, hey that's, that's the guy that knocked out Mundino that's Zarafa you know like yeah. or he's the villain or he's the bad or whatever even if it's good media or bad talk or whatever it may be like it's it's about you you know it's an individual sport Um, it's it's yeah, it's it's marvel. It's it's yeah, it's weird. It's a weird feeling. I love it, mate. Well, uh, I cannot wait to watch <laughs> the fire, and uh, I'm sure we're going to be meeting again. You're going to be the world champion. The world champion. It's going to be amazing. Uh, as part of this as well, I'm going to get you to sign a couple of gloves. And for some of the people that are listening up to uh, the podcast, we're going to give it away. Awesome. Um, when we when we do it for a bit of a uh, bit of promo, we will get it pumping. Um, and mate, good luck with everything. Oh, it's been so it. fantastic you. to hear all the prep that you put in, uh, the motivation, uh, how you stay so sharp. It's been you know. Amazing chat. So thank you so much I for coming it, down. I appreciate you doing great things and I uh, wish you all the best. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, my friend. Too good. Too good. Too good.